Welcome back everyone to the Otaku Collective. It's been quite some time since I last made one of these anime mobile game first impression videos. The last one being on Figure Fantasy. And the one I decided to take a look at this time is not really an anime game, but one that popped up as an ad on my feed either way and piqued my interest with its impressive visuals. Super String, or the universe of Super String, The Chosen Ones, is a turn-based collectible RPG, much like Figure Fantasy. It was created by a South Korean company called Factorial Games, which, based on this website here, is an IT company specialized in mobile games and software development services. And as you can see, this company has actually been acquired by Pearl Abyss in early 2021. Pearl Abyss, best known of course for its game Black Desert. Looking at Factorial Games website, it looks like they created two games so far, Super String and a game called Lost Kingdom, which seems to only be available in South Korea at the moment. As for Super String, let's take a look at the description they have on their website, the details of which I haven't looked into until I started putting this video together. The Asian Avengers project will be remembered as a new myth. Popular webtoon characters gathered in one game. This line here threw me into a bit of a rabbit hole because I've seen several ads for webtoons on my various socials. Going on this Wikipedia page, webtoons are a type of digital comic that originated in South Korea, usually meant to be read on computers and smartphones. While webtoons are mostly unknown outside of South Korea during their inception, there has been a surge in popularity internationally, thanks in great part to the rise in popularity of manhwa, and the fact that most manhwa are released in webtoons. In the country, as digital manhwa have emerged as a popular medium, print publication of manhwa has decreased. The amount of material published in webtoon form has now reached an equal amount as that published offline. Now for the format, webtoons usually feature a few of common traits. Each episode is published on one long vertical strip, making use of an infinite canvas rather than multiple pages so that it is easier to read on a smartphone or computer. Some will feature music and animations that play during each chapter, and unlike the majority of East Asian comics, they will most likely be in color rather than in black and white, since they are published digitally on a website or app rather than physically in a magazine. In the case of South Korea, there are also different censorship laws for materials published online than in print, which has led to more manhwa, that is, erotic and sexually explicit, being produced and published as webtoons. While I was playing the game, I questioned why all the characters were so... varied. And now that I've looked into it, it makes sense. I found this Reddit thread that gave better detail. There is a huge project called Superstream Project that is happening in the Korean webtoon. Many webtoons from the company YLab are connecting to become one universe. Some of the webtoons include Terror Man, Distant Sky, Revival Man, Island, and more. In the Korean webtoon, there are already many connections that were made. An example could be the terrorist guy in Distant Sky. This character is the main character of the webtoon Terror Man. Due to extreme environmental pollution, the Earth is on the verge of collapse. Human beings plan to move to a new Earth by opening the Door of Dimensions, using Super String Theory. Suggests that the vibrations of Infinitesimally... In infinitesimally... Screw it. Small strings create everything in the universe. After opening the door of dimensions, monsters from the other worlds enter our present reality, causing panic and unheard of disaster. Into the midst of this desperate situation come our unexpected saviors, heroes from other worlds with supernatural powers traveling through the multiverse. Humans succeed in defeating the monsters and closing the door to the multiverse with the hero's help. But even though the door is closed, the Earth remains in danger. Some of the scientists who open the door to the multiverse insist that using it is a necessary sacrifice in the present to ensure the survival and success of humanity in the future. Opponents strongly resist, arguing that building on the present sacrifice is of no use. Even the otherworldly heroes find that there are a radiological made of a typo there, differences between them. And apparently the Super String webtoon at the time was only translated up to a certain point, being three years ago that might have changed, so if you're curious, you might want to take a dive into this webtoon yourself. This video, however, is just focusing on the Super String game. Looking at YLab's website, you can find some more info as well as characters, 
with very nice artwork and a timeline with distant sky at the end as mentioned in the reddit thread. Once you start the game you're shown this impressive animation. After this, we are put through the usual string of tutorials. It starts off by showing you the objectives and then moves on to a cutscene, I guess you could call this, of the involved characters talking to each other. These types of scenes are what gives us the rest of the story. The opening animation is just for the opening. Even so, it's nice to see that there was effort put in these scenes as other mobile games skimp out and just use still images. The campaign is played by moving your team of up to four characters on a board with branching paths. When you move over to an enemy, it goes into a turn-based battle system, of which is not bad. Yes, you can use autoplay if you'd like, which I do myself on simple battles. However, on more difficult battles, you may want to switch to manual mode. On the left of the screen, you'll have your character info such as their health, whether they have enough skill points to activate certain moves, character types which range from attack, specialist, defense, and support. Many characters have a mix of the two like Sukwan in the blue jacket who is defense, offense type. You will also see the character buffs and debuffs. On the top left, you'll see this little wheel that shows what types are strong and weak to others. If you look at the enemy, you'll see the targets are either bright or dark depending on type advantage. You'll also be able to see the enemy stats above their heads. On the bottom right, you'll see four types of moves, the last one being your ultimate. Each one of these moves have different effects and animations. Speaking of animations, the game devs actually put some effort on these, as many characters have some really cool looking animations, especially the SS class characters ultimates. Even the lower class characters have great animations to all their moves. Lastly, next to your skills is the turn order showing what character will be attacking next. Super String makes you feel like you actually have to try to win battles, especially when you move on to something like raid bosses. At the end of each battle, you are shown a nice little animation of the character that is the MVP of that particular battle, as well as battle stats, which show who did more damage, defense, or lost the most health, as well as whatever loot was gained. After this, you get more animated scenes and tutorials. As for the story of Super String, I was left wondering just what the heck was going on because I didn't have the context from the webtoons this whole universe is based off of. And going off of the game itself, you can at least understand that there is a multiverse situation happening while trying to save humanity. As you move forward, you're introduced to more characters and campaign elements such as enemy outposts, spots you can find clues which show extra bits of the story, classified codes that can be used once you liberate a base camp which can heal your team, recover the amount of operations, or number of times one of your teams can move on the board. Yes, the number of movements you can make are limited to three, and the further you get in the campaign, the more teams you can have, which is also three. These classified codes can also raise your stats temporarily and even show hidden items on the board. Other than campaign, there are various other modes such as skirmish, in which you can battle other people's computer controlled teams for special loot. The loot, however, takes several real time hours to open. There's also raid, in which you fight against the character boss, which is basically a reskin of an original character, who you can reach after you take out several monsters. There's also PvP, but as you can see, I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm sure it's self-explanatory. There are also challenges like Abyss, which is basically a tower mode like most mobile games have, where you fight through foes of ever-increasing difficulty to obtain rewards, except you're only able to play as long as you have an Abyss license, which you can recharge or just wait till the next day, and each day you're able to play three times without recharging. Next is event PvP, 
where you go into matchmaking and try to get win streaks so you can win the prizes you see on the screen. There's also All Out Mode, which is like Abyss but is more challenging and you can use 5 characters instead of 4. Your rewards are accumulated and if you take your reward before you reach the end, you won't be able to continue until the mode resets which can be several real world days. And finally, we have Event Blitz, which is similar to Abyss and All Out Mode but this time you can only use characters in a team once. After you use those characters, you'll have to form a team on the next level with new characters forcing you to manage ones you wouldn't otherwise use. Click to the challenges icon you have alliances, which is the same thing as a guild hub like in other games. Now of course you have the most important part to any gacha game, the summons, where you can get new agents and equipment. Now there are several ways you can summon agents. Prophetic summon allows you to see a group summon and if you are happy with the results, you can use real money to buy them. If you don't see the agents you want, you can summon again up to 30 times. Once you make a choice however, you will have to wait 28 days before you can do it again. This also goes for equipment. Recruit agent lets you summon 4 agents at a time for free, however you will have to wait several hours until that summon comes up. The higher the rank, the longer the wait. You can narrow down your summons by selecting a type and using agents from specific worlds to increase your chances of pulling one from that same world. If you keep pulling agents you already have like I am here, you will get general souls that you can use to make choice agents stronger. You can also summon agents the traditional way by using tickets individually or using 10 at once for a group summon. You can also use the in-game currency Titan which can be bought with real money in the event summon to have a higher chance at whatever agent is posted for said event. This all applies to equipment summons as well. If you manage to get a set of characters from a specific universe, you can get permanent stat bonuses. You can view these in your commander's quarters along with your game stats, your memory suit manager which allows you to plug the outfits you bought in this menu here to receive the stat boosts in certain modes. And you can also view the archives of the story you've seen thus far. Other menu items you have are login bonuses, playtime bonuses, friend lists which you can gain friendship tokens from to purchase items, the festa menu which lets you win rewards by collecting daily and monthly tasks, patrolling where you can send a team of 4 agents out for 24 hours to retrieve credits, your inventory screen which shows your equipment, items and souls, you also have the laboratory you can craft cores to strengthen your agents as well as transmogrification which lets you exchange souls for either lower, equivalent, or higher rank souls. Useful if you only want to max out your favorite agents faster. And lastly, we have the shop, where you can buy bundles and packs, game currency, various items using the various in-game currencies as well as memory suits and outfits. Now not every character has an alternate outfit available for them sadly, they all look great as you can see here. I ended up getting outfits for my favorite agents as and I think they look the best. But now we finally get to the end of this review and I have to tell you this one took me way longer than my first review with Figure Fantasy. The main reason being that I just got really lazy and put it off for so long. This was actually supposed to be done in February if you can believe it. The other reason is that while Super String is a mobile game, it has more going for it than others I've played. Which put me off whenever I was writing this review because there was a lot of little things to mention and it felt like it was more than what I intended for this series which is just to see if the game is worth a try or not. Even so, I did it because yes, I do think Super String is worth a try at least. Victorial Games definitely put some work into this game and it helps a lot that the story and its characters have a strong background with the webtoons. Because of that, the game doesn't suffer from the lack of creativity that most mobile games do because of their just cash grabs. I've been playing Super String since November of last year, I believe, and I haven't felt pressured into spending any money. I've been free to play this whole time, and I still enjoy the game. With the last game I reviewed, Figure Fantasy, while I liked the concept very much, the game didn't go much further than that. Figure Fantasy did have more events going on, but lacked everything else. I stopped playing that game a month or two ago because I just didn't see the devs doing anything to improve the game. In the end it was just another cash grab like many other anime games saying, hey look cute anime girls, now give money. 
So in conclusion, Super String, it's definitely worth a try. So if you like this video, do remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a suggestion, ring that bell button, look out for my live streams on YouTube or Twitch. And remember to keep on collecting, keep on gaming, and keep on sharing. I will be reviewing Tower of Fantasy for the next one. Hopefully it plays as good as it looks.